Oh yeah, and just one point, just before we do move on, I forgot to mention, these top four tree shapes here, and certainly these four trees, are all evergreens. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the winter or the summer, you're still going to be painting essentially the same tree. Right, now I'll put a simple watercolour sky on this picture. If you want to have a look at uh, how to do a watercolour sky, have a look at the painting watercolour clouds video and that'll get you started uh, with a very simple wash similar to this. But I have a confession to make before we go any further because having used the number five round brush for the previous demos, I got to this point and I've suddenly realised it's going to be quite inadequate to paint this uh, bigger tree and the foliage and indeed even the smaller trees in the background. So I'm changing it for a number 10. So forgive Bob, but the point is that you never use a brush that's too small for what you need to do. Always use a bigger brush than you think you need. Right, we're going to start off with a very, very pale wash of the cadmium yellow in the background. That's too strong right away, so we'll take that down with some water just for the background hills. Okay, like that. It's all little bits of nothing really, but it looks quite effective once you've uh, once you've finished. Now then, you can see how the darker foreground or the darker colour has pushed this lighter colour into the background. What I'll also do now is just put a very pale wash of cadmium yellow all around the foreground. I'm going to ignore that path for the moment. I'm going to go into these background trees. I'm coming back to me cheating number 10 brush. Oh yes, incidentally, I'll imagine the light coming from the left hand side. You see how it's, it's nicely framed, already started to frame the, uh, the cottage. Detail. It looks like there's a lot of detail here, there's actually very little detail indeed. It's all, as you can see so far, blobs of paint. But I'm just going to scrape sideways. I'm going to take some of that paint off because there's a bit too much on the brush. And this is going to give me the, the base colour, still a bit too much, I just want some sort of, that's better, hit and miss. And I'm just roughly following this outline, I'm not following it slavishly, so I'm, I'm probably going over most of it. But I'm okay. okay, well that's not looking too bad. Just putting a little bit darker on now, on the, uh, on the shadow side. Just dry that off a little bit. and particularly underneath, but put your shadows on top of the sky holes like that. As if this part of the tree is getting the sunlight and that part's getting the sunlight, but that part ain't. And you can see even this number 10 brush, I'm having to work a little bit to make sure I cover all the areas as quickly as I can before the paint dries. I want that, that's it. I want that to obviously come in front of the house and in front of these trees, because that then pushes the house and these trees right back. As the brush is drying off, the other thing is you can see it's almost creating individual little leaves. Right, I'm actually going to move on now with the flat brush to do the tree trunk. Now in other videos you'll see me use the round brush, but just to prove a point, you can perfectly well use the flat brush. And similarly here, if you want to create a hint of slender branches and twigs. And I think what will be nice now is we'll take out some of the, the dark tree trunk colour to get to give a light shining on the uh, on the trunk a strong Just sunlight pulling that out a little bit here and there you can take it back in as if you if you take too much out you can see it I, I want to try and retain that little bit of light there 
when I add a little bit more shadow to it. It's also dark enough on the shadow side to stand out ahead of that middle distance uh, hillside there. Just try it. I'm using my thumbnail there. You can use the edge of a credit card or a little sort of cocktail stick. If you catch the paint right, you can create some sort of nice little light highlights there, which look like little white trunks of the, the little path. A little bit of a brown colour. Take, that's better. Take some of the strength out of that. So it again adds a bit of, a bit of distance to it. couple or three posts. That's going to be the light side at first. Just first. So there we are, painting summer trees on video. Well, two videos to be precise, and I hope you found them enjoyable and useful. I do apologise about the hiccup I had towards the end of the second part with the loss of sound, but I think that's a lesson for all of us, whether we're videoing, painting, or doing anything, that we will meet challenges, and there's always a way around the problem if you look for it. So stick at your painting, enjoy it, and I promise you will progress. And if you keep coming back to houseanddrawingpaint.com, you'll find loads of hints and tips on painting and drawing. There'll be loads more videos in the future, so hopefully we'll meet again. See you for now. Bye.